Guys, here we go. Check this out. This is Whole Nother Level with Dwayne Lindo. You know, frankly, I, I, I feel that we shouldn't even be talking about this. Simple as that. Frank Mize. Did they win the offseason in free agency? Yes. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Craig Cousins. How can you not put Tom Brady number one on the Mount Rushmore quarterbacks? Man, this guy's a legend. Ring speak. And Eric Wilson. I didn't know Eric was going to let you talk. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I, I've seen enough Facebook posts to know that you're not a Giants fan. <laughs> Let's go. And welcome, everyone, to another edition of Whole Nother Level. Alongside the great L. Bushman joining us from the sports arena and the one and only Craig Cousin. This is Eric Wilson back in the studio. Was gone last week with Mr. L. Bushman. Took a trip over to Orlando. Welcome back. Thank you. I, I called you. in a little bit just to, uh, you know, give everybody a little shout, see how y'all were doing. I know there was some stuff y'all wanted to talk to me about, but I hung up too quick. We was in line for the Harry Potter ride, so. Yeah, I really want to talk to you about it, but I guess we'll I get know. into it today. We'll definitely get into it today. Uh, the Called one you only, out, though, too. That's fine. The one and only Dwayne Lindo will be joining us momentarily. <laughs> But we do this each and every Saturday live from 1 till 3 p.m. Eastern on stlrmedia.com. I am on Facebook Live, so big shout-out to everybody tuning in there. And for all of our listeners who feel froggy and want to chime in, give us a call on the Frisco Fades phone line. That's 941 area code 358-5701. Gentlemen, I got a new toy here with my microphone, so I can actually start pivoting and ask, what's going on, Craig? How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing real good. Real good, man. I'm Good. looking to get into some sports today. I know. Coming it, off that uh, game four last night where Cleveland showed what Cleveland shows in the finals. Man, I, 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 we will definitely get into that. But, of course, El Bushman, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm not as hungover as last time. Le okay, yeah, that's right. You uh, you so, had a little. Yes, yes, thank you. There thank you for the clutter. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we are very thankful to have you with us. So, first and foremost, i got to get this order of business out the way. Um, you know, last week, you gentlemen... You honored a great, great man, and I had the opportunity to speak on him very quickly in Muhammad Ali, one of, if not, in my opinion, the greatest boxer ever in the world of professional boxing. However, this week, we lost Mr. Hockey himself, Gordie Howe, died at age 88, and, uh, you know, I'm not a really huge, big hockey fan, but um, it, it's a sad day. It really is in the world of hockey. I know the the Pens and the San Jose Sharks are playing tomorrow night, and I'm sure they'll do something in memoriam of him. But we here at Whole Nine Level want to offer our condolences as well to Gordy Howe. You um, have to, you have to. Uh, if you go for the around, uh, Mount Rushmore uh, of hockey players, he's up there. You know, oh, yeah. along with Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky. You talk about some other ones, but he's definitely one of the greats. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Is this 2016 the year of everybody cool has been dying? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, Prince. Prince is gone. Um, we lost Muhammad Ali. We lost Gordie Howe. I mean, yeah, some of the yeah, greats. Yeah, silverback gorilla. He's gone. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, I was, that's true. I was really that's an endangered species. I was a little shocked about the news of him dying because you didn't really hear anything about him being sick at all. So when I got the alert he's, he died, I was like, wow, this is this is kind of a shocker. I was yeah, like, okay. usually you get a little bit of news. Yeah, saying, like they're like, in the hospital. Yeah. Or they've been hospitalized, but nothing. Kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it came one. out of nowhere, yeah. It's unfortunate. I actually, real quick, I'll tell you all a story. I actually had the opportunity to meet Gordy Howe not once but twice really here in Florida I met him at the chart house for the very first time I met him I met Mrs. Hockey uh Colleen Mrs. Colleen Howe wonderful wonderful woman and I actually got to meet Phil Esposito okay so awesome. I got to meet them and we're talking this is um 1999 2000 and I met them at the chart house and then I met him again him, his wife, and the family. I met them at another restaurant that I worked at, so I can say I had the pleasure of meeting him. And I mean, talk about a guy who, you know, even though he was getting up there in age, still had all his wits about him. This man was just, he was funny, he was on point. Still he sharp as attack. Still sharp as attack, still. And so, you know, that was, I was very, I was very moved when I saw yesterday that he was no longer with us, so. Uh, with that being said, yeah, Craig, let's just jump right into it, man. Game four was last night, and I don't even know where to start except to say the Cavs showed their true colors last night. They really did. 
they couldn't get up for this game knowing how the how the series works because I honestly thought the series was two three two. I thought they were still doing the whole. Yeah, you two, said three, that a couple two. weeks ago, and then I didn't correct you because I had to go look. But it's, <laughs> it's two two one one one. Right. Yeah. So they went back to the original to the original they set. Did. So I'm yep. like, all right. So you know where you're at if you're Cleveland. You know how important this game is, but yet. You don't show up for it? I mean, Cleveland waited the game three to even show up in the series regardless. I don't know what they did in Golden State. They barely got off the plane. Uh, J.R. Smith was nowhere to be found. Uh, you know, obviously Kevin Love got – I think he played a half of the second game. Uh, yeah, he was unavailable for last game. Concussion. Yep. So, you know, he came into – the Cavs came into game four coming off a huge win. I don't know if they thought, like, okay, we're just going to roll through him again and we got Kevin Love back. This is our home court. We're going to protect it. They played really well for two, two and a half quarters. And then they went back to what they did. They must have been – I almost called Kyrie Westbrook in the fourth quarter because he was just ISOing everybody and taking it to the rack. Granted, he was the only one that was really scoring. LeBron James played a terrible game. He got some garbage minutes, garbage points in the last few minutes, like six to eight points where he just got layups or dunks when actually they should have been trying to go for threes because they were just exchanging baskets because they were making their free throws in Golden State. So I don't know what they were doing in that situation. But basically, LeBron James would drive to the lane. Then he would just get off his feet and, and – basically within midair, try to throw a, a, a bounce pass, not even a bounce, some of them bounce passes, some air passes, so it was out of bounds. I mean, he was basically, all he had to do was do a turn and hook jump, and instead he was just getting basically mauled by two or three people, whether they hit his arms, no calls, or whether they hit the ball. He didn't know what he was doing with the ball, basically. So it didn't look like LeBron James that really was trying to commandly take over the game like he should. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think he had something like two points in the first quarter or something like that as well. I mean, he finished with 25. He was 11 for 21, but he was only one from five for three-point range. But those numbers are miscued because in the last like two minutes of the game, he had like four layups slash dunks. So that's four for four right. on basically <laughs> nobody guarding him at all, just getting garbage points. So that's what I'm saying. He, played, he didn't play a great game at all. No, he didn't. What I found most interesting about this and what I, what I definitely wanted to talk to you gentlemen was about, you know, it just seemed like, Kyrie Irving tried to do what LeBron normally does, and that's take over a game. I watched, I watched pretty much that whole entire game. Mm-hmm. But the third quarter, it just seemed like Kyrie was trying to do too much in order to get himself to get this team ahead. And I'm like, where's LeBron? Where's R.J. Smith? Where's Kevin Love? You let him He was come- R.J. Smith instead yeah, of J.R. Smith. That's for damn sure. What I noticed was <laughs> when, he, when he was taking over the team was, why is LeBron letting him do this? This is your team. Right. And is, is this Tyron Lue's plan in the second half is to let him take over and do whatever it is what he wants to do? I, I really don't know. Well, listen, speaking I, I, of Tyron Lue, let's just, let's just get the, the cat out of the bag right now. David Black could have done this. Yeah. David Black won two games last year with a team that didn't have Kyrie Love, didn't ha- or Kyrie Irving didn't have Kevin Love at all. So for you know, Tyron Lue to take a team now with those two superstars and only win one game out of three or four games so far. And let's be honest, I think everybody in this room thinks they're going to go back to Golden State and, and pretty much get ran out of the gym. I think it's over in five now. And, I, and I'm coming from someone that picked the Cavs in six. I'm going to agree with you, Craig. I, I picked the Cavs too. It's, you would think they would live, win both games in Cleveland. You're going back home. I mean, you blew them out. You blew them out of the, the game before this, and then you, just, you throw it away in this one. Because I watched the first half. They look great. They look great in the first half, and then you come out in the second half – they're missing shots. They're making stupid mistakes passing wise. They aren't rebounding. Free throws were atrocious last night. So I don't know what they're doing when it comes to the second half. It's like, okay, I think we'll coast by and just do whatever we want. To do. But I think a lot of that has to do with coaching. And, and a coach in Tyron Lou being a first year coach, being in a tough situation, he didn't make the adjustments needed. At halftime, they were winning. But when things started getting rough for them, he didn't make the adjustments needed. Uh, that they needed to make going forward, whether that be getting the ball to Kevin Love or LeBron James in the post and letting them work off of a post, some pick-and-roll action, things like that. There was no ball movement. There was stagnant on offense. It was one pass a shot every single time. Or Do you see how they just stood around the basket when somebody shot the ball? Yeah. They just stood around. There's nobody body underneath. Anybody. They There's let Varejao go all over the place. Krusty the freaking clown. Krusty the clown doing work. I mean, the guy looks like Carrot Top. He was okay for Cleveland. He's in, oh, yeah. he's in look, look like a superstar for Golden State in, in the minimal minutes that he got. The only person that hustled in this entire game consistently for the Cavs was Tristan Thompson. He's the only one that put a body on anybody all game. Here's my thing. Has Draymond Green finally got into LeBron's head? Has he cracked the code on how to get in LeBron's head? No. I mean, I, I saw I that in the third quarter. And I was just like, really? LeBron, you realize where you're at right now. Your team is down. And you're going to let this guy? 
Draymond Green, Mr. Emotional City himself. I mean, he's worse than Big Baby Davis. I'm sorry. He is. <laughs> he is a crybaby. He's a crybaby. He is a crybaby. But he plays with such intensity that I'm just like, are, are you kidding me right now? This guy is going to be the guy to knock you off your game? This is going to be the guy that you're going to deal with? I mean, Andre Iguodala, I'm telling you right now, Philly, one of the biggest mistakes you ever made was letting him go because Andre Iguodala is playing out of his mine he is but so is everybody else i was i said to one of my friends last night harrison barnes every time i look up he makes a three and he's like the third fourth fifth option on the damn team sean livingston so, that's what i'm saying Igual is making shots everybody is. everybody's making shots. but you know th- that speaks volumes to what coach ball movement screen setting it's a team basketball they're the epitome of team basketball mm-hmm. whereas the Cavs, like oklahoma city fell to in the last round reverted back to one-on-one street basketball and that doesn't win it doesn't you, get you it can done tell, you can tell between both teams like when you can tell when golden state gets the ball it's up tempo it's up tempo as soon as cleveland gets the ball it's like slow motion but see, LeBron tried that last night. LeBron tried to bring an up-tempo beat, and I don't think the rest of the team kind of picked up what he was trying to throw down because literally I saw what he do the one time. LeBron looked like he was going to the hole. He's in midair, and he kicks the ball out to somebody, damn near throws it in the cheap seats. And who was it? Was it? Uh, Dodova, I think. It was either Dodova or a Shumpert or somebody well, sure. had to go after. <laughs> is Shumpert even playing the NBA anymore? Because he looks like he can play for my Y League team and struggle. Listen. I mean, what has happened to this guy? He's really regressed. The only person, you said Tristan Thompson. I think the only person who had a little bit of hustle out there last night was Della Vadova. Granted, he was only out there for four and a half minutes. They didn't give him any playing time. No, the they be- didn't. He's the best on-guard defender they have on the team. They gave him zero playing time. So that's another coaching decision that went wrong. And that's why I say, <laughs> I posted it last night. David Blatt is smiling right now. So wherever the hell he is, he was smiling last night thinking, you know what? I did a better job than that. And people forget, when he got fired, when LeBron James fired David Blatt, because that's what happened, they were in first place. They were. And he could have won in this game. They, he could, LeBron James gives you one. Right. So it's up to the coaching staff to get the right pieces in place and make the right coaching decisions in order to win multiple games in an NBA Finals. And that's not what's being done right now. So let's talk about Mr. Concussion, because I want to talk about the impact – that he had on this game last night, which was pretty much non-existent. <clears throat> was it a good idea to bring him in? That's, I think, that's my I th- question. I think the idea was to, yeah, bring him in to see what kind of impact he could make. him. He had, what, 10 or 11 points? Uh, Kevin Love last night. Let me see here. Hold on. Because I actually do have my notes today. He was three for six. He finished with 11 points. Okay, 11 points. So he's coming off the bench off of a, He had a concussion. Yeah. I mean, you're going to limit his min, uh, minutes anyway, so why not keep him for the next game? Uh, well, I would just say sit him for both games. See, I'm because... on the opposite end of that because J.R. Smith played awful in the first two games, didn't even show up. He went off last game, but he still took a, a crap ton of shots. So you need someone that can get to the basket and score. Granted, his defense is non-existent, and that's the problem. You, you take his offense what he gets. He shot 50%, only took six shots, but – at the same time, he didn't play a damn bit of damn defense. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was all for the Kevin Love to Boston play, but if you're not, if you're going to come over there and don't play defense, you can stay your ass in Cleveland because I don't want you <laughs> in Boston. You know what I'm saying? But, but with that said, I kind of see, I kind of see mirror images um, of what I saw in Miami. I remember after the first two, three games of a series, the final series in Miami, everybody saying Chris Bosh, he's awful, he's regressed, he can't play defense, he can't share the ball. You know what I'm saying? I, I heard this exact same sentiments. And when you look at Kevin Love, he's the third option, just like Chris Bosh was to the Dwayne Wade, to the Le- LeBron James there. It's LeBron, it's Kyrie, then it's Kevin Love. Coming from Minnesota where he touched the ball every possession, Chris Bosh touched every, every possession in Toronto. So I think those two players have had a really hard time accepting their role as a third option the third, and adjusting. Yeah, yeah. And it's up to the coaching staff to get them in position to when they're in there still believe that they're the number one. You know, there's three number ones instead of they're the third option. Okay, so what you're saying is basically it comes down to coaching. So the question is this. We all know this, and we'll be the first here to say it on a whole other level. When it comes to fruition, just remember you heard it here first. Tyron Lue is gone. Who comes in? I don't know if he is, though, because LeBron no. likes him. That's his boy. Yeah. Yeah, but That's still, his boy. I understand that. But they're going to give him another year. So what if LeBron leaves? Then what's the point? <laughs> they ha- that is not happening. <laughs> he signed a two-year deal. This he's, is it. He's a free agent. He's a free agent. Cleveland can throw all the money they gonna, want. I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw you a bone. Okay. If, if Lou was gone, Patrick Ewing's the coach. I mean, that would be awesome. I'd be I just, a happy I man, don't, boy. I just don't think that would happen. I just don't think it's going to happen. But if I, never am Lebr- say never. if I am LeBron James and being the caliber of star I am, the first person I'm calling as soon as they lose in Golden State, Kevin. Man, it didn't work with Westbrook. It didn't work over here with me and Kyrie. You think we can make something happen? Oh, we're both going. Yeah, if we got to pick up, you want to come to Cleveland? I'm going to OKC. Hey, we're both going to L.A. How about, how about Boston? <laughs> Somewhere. What do you think? 
I don't think it's not going to happen. You know what? You know what? Happen in the no. You know what? Let's marinate on that for a minute. We are going to take a break. When we come back, we will discuss the potential of where is LeBron going to go? KD going to go? Are they going to go together? Are they going to go separate? You are listening to us. Whole nother level. We'll be right back. Give me about two, three minutes. Welcome back to a whole nother level. These guys drop more points than Steph Curry. And welcome back to Whole Another Level. All right, so before we left and went to break, the question was asked, where's LeBron going to go? Where's KD going to go? What's going to happen in this summer of free agency? So, uh, Mr. L. Bushman, I'm going to kick it off to you and ask you first. So, let me ask you. Okay. Where is LeBron going to go, or is he going to stay in Cleveland? I see him staying in Cleveland. He owes it to that city. I don't see them winning the championship this year, of course. I think we're all in agreement on that. Correct? Okay, yeah. I see him staying in Cleveland. Only only reason why is because he can bring people to Cleveland. So I know if it's I know if Cleveland is a dump of a town, but he's a guy that can bring his boys in. He can bring in the KDs. He can bring in the Mellows. He can even bring Dwayne Wade in. So he can he can call up his guys and be like, look, I need some help. Okay, all right. You can get rid of Kevin Love, too. You can get something for Kevin Love. I agree with you. Okay. I think he's going to stay in Cleveland. All right, Craig, I'm going to ask you the question. Same question. That was funny. I was just joking around last night, so I posted, uh, you know, coming to a theater near you, The Decision 2, starring LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, that, wouldn't that be great if he had I'm going doing, back to Miami. That's it. <laughs> what? I, I literally wouldn't be surprised if that – That's. I think that's his only other option. I don't think he leaves Cleveland. I, I'm, in, I'm in it with you. I think he stays in Cleveland because you, you just can't do it after what you did to him first. Um, but if he does go somewhere, it's going to be in Miami. You know, he still has a strong relationship with Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade's going to be a heat lifer. He's not going to leave to go to Cleveland, I don't think. I just don't see him doing that. Um, as far as Kevin Durant, I'm, I still think he's just going to sign a one-year, maybe two-year with the player option for the second year because Westbrook's contract's up at the end of next year. So I think he re-signs with OKC to figure out what they're going to both do at the end of that contract. I agree with you on that because I look at it this way. Durant and Westbrook have unfinished business. Because so they're going to stay that last year. They're going to stay that last year because what had happened in the the the, East, the concert, conference semifinals, the way it happened, the way it went down, I think they have unfinished business to to want to go back and try and go back again. He's they, not leaving. So one just year. imagine what they're feeling right now. Exactly. If you're well, Kevin Durant, if you're Russell Westbrook, you were up three to one on the team. To That's one. actually up three to one on Cleveland right yeah, now. I understand. So you got to think like. Unfin- wow, unfinished business. we would have won the championship. Yeah, Could have, would have, should have. So, yep. I mean, unfinished business. I think, I think this. Plus, their roster got a lot better, man. Yeah. All they need now is just one one score coming off the bench yep. and, and one more year under uh, Coach Donovan. And I think that they'll, you know, be right back where they were. So, they're going to turn the page next year, do what they didn't do this year, and make it to the NBA Finals. That's what you gentlemen are I'm not are jumping to anything saying. yet. I'm saying that they have all the possibility to get back. But, I mean, without free agency in the draft, and we don't know where pieces are going to go yet, right. it's hard to just go out and predict. I think the Spurs are going to be really good again. I think the Clippers might do something to, to go with Blake Griffin and Chris Paul. You know, let's see what happens with this Golden State team. Can they stay together again, or can they bring in another piece? Uh, we'll see what, what happens with Cleveland. And then, you know, I'm, I'm still sticking with my squad because I know we have a lot of picks and a lot of cap space. So we'll see if we okay, can do something. but do they need to? Does Golden State really need to do anything? Evan, let me ask you. Does Golden State need to do anything? Honestly, looking at this team to right add, now. To the, add more pieces, subtract anything? Or honestly, do, no. Okay. Well, I mean, why rock the boat when it's already perfect as it is? That's what I'm saying. I'm looking at this team now. The way they've done the past year and a half through last season and through this season and now through the playoffs you don't need to touch much. You don't. You don't. But, you don't, but the problem with it is a lot of the bench players that are outplaying their contract are going to want to get paid more. So it, it comes to the the forefront and you're like okay do we want to pay Livingston this much more do we want to pay Iggy Dalla this much more okay if we paid both of those more Harrison Barnes wants a max contract he's already come out and said it so are they going to throw that money at Harrison Barnes now um you know you have Azili still there you don't know what you're going to get with for some other pieces but they had David Lee last year you know on the team and they did a good job of replacing him with Azili with Anderson Berge out uh, playing basically the minutes that he was playing so we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, if a Kevin Durant comes in, guess what? They have to clean house. Hell yeah, they got to get rid of, like, three of mm-hmm. their really good players. So okay, all right, hold on. I don't, I don't sit here and think that they should really mess with it, especially if they win back-to-back championships. Two championships, you play as a team, you're growing as a team. Right. Continue to grow and play well as a team. Right. Um, That's but, what I'm saying. But at the same time, you're also going to see how big of a uh, role that Luke Walton played. 
because we're going to see if it was all Steve Kerr or Luke Walton had a big because he's gone. Going back you know, to he the, accepted another job. Going back to the KD thing, if if you're Golden State, are you willing to give up a lot for Kevin Durant, who's getting older and has been hurt? Would you give up a whole haul just for him, though? No, no, but he's a free agent. You wouldn't have to give up. Oh, you're talking about your own players. Your own right. players, yeah. I mean, if 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 you have the possibility of keeping a uh, Clay Thompson, getting a Kevin Love, and keeping a Steph Curry, wait, and, wait, you and, say and, Kevin Love. Or uh, not Kevin Love, um, Kevin Durant. Okay. Sorry, two Kevins. So if you have the possibility of getting Kevin Durant, you're keeping Steph and Clay, and you and all you have to do is get rid of a Livingston and Igudala for that price. Do you really want to get rid of an Andre? I, I, you don't, I, you I don't would, but I'm probably but, do but I'm saying majority of people are going to pull that trigger. I, I, listen, I wouldn't do it. No, I would, that, I this would is what I'm saying it. to you. Look at the teams, and everybody wants to compare them to the Bulls of the '90s. All right, so let's look at the Bulls of the '90s. The mm-hmm. Bulls of the 90s, those guys stayed together. They did. They played together and got three championship rings. If you want to be considered the, one of the greatest teams and be compared to the Bulls of the 90s, then I'm sorry. You keep what you got. And everybody else, guess what? Go somewhere else. Because what, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, and if you are those bench players and you're still going to be making five, six, seven, eight, nine million a year, maybe you're not making that 16 max contract or whatever it might be. But you're it, getting a third ring. That's what I'm saying. I, know, if, I stay it, my ass there and get paid and get a ring. If you've you. already won two in a row, yes. then then you might want to take that pay cut. Just continue to make what you're making. Because look at David West. He passed up $12 million this year, whatever it was, $10 million, right. to make $1 million with the Spurs and not even get there. Exactly. So, I mean, you know that's eating at him right now. Like, I just – I had a chance to make $10, $12 million, and I took a million to get to the finals and win the championship, and I didn't get that. So, I mean, you got to look and be – you know, market consistency. Legacy. You can say You can say that you were on a team that won – Two back to back and possibly three, possibly four. I mean, who knows if they win another one, they can start talking about the old LeBron James. Not one, not two, yep. not three. Make those videos and then send it right to LeBron. That, that, that's my point. <laughs> that thank you, thank you for. I didn't have this. Voice my opinion. You made my point for me. You have two. You're going to have a second ring. We're all saying that. We've changed our picks from Cleveland to Golden State. Oh, you have to. So no team has ever done it. With right. that, with that said, could. The, if you had to pick anybody to do it, it would it would be LeBron yep. in the game right now. But he doesn't have the supporting cast. But with yeah, I don't I don't see it happening. Could you imagine a three one deficit? Golden State go, gets through to get there, and then they flip and lose a three one deficit in the finals. I mean, it'd be unbelievable. That would be like uh, the Red Sox being the Yankees. That one year. Oh, the one year. Oh, that's oh, right. That one, yeah, that one year. they were down. Three I was one. like, wait, are we talking one this year? year? That one year. That right. one year. That one. But that's what I'm saying to you. I'm I saying remember that one. Year. You look at you look at these teams. And you look at just the Golden State nucleus. You look at who's there. You look at what they've done. They got better the year after they won a championship. They're on course to win a second championship. Hell, hold on a level where we throw out championships. They're going to get number two, okay? Why would you, in good conscience, go somewhere else for a max contract and you may never see even sniff the postseason? And if you're, go, if you're, those, if you're those guys, especially if you're the coach, Steve Kerr, why would you want to mess up the formula and the chemistry those guys have on that team anyways? Right. Because if you mess up a formula and the chemistry – it's done. It's done. It's, it's over. over. So, like like you said, Craig, if, if you're one of the bench guys, take that that less pay because you're going to get paid anyways and get that third ring. Right. But I'm saying you're going to have to pay everybody. It's going to be Curry. It's going to be Thompson. But it's going to be Draymond Green. And all of them are going to want max contracts. So the problem is you can only give up two, maybe three max contracts and still be able to field a roster. So if all of them want to make money, which they do because some of them haven't made that big payday yet, they're thinking that's like, when they're you thinking start like getting the next James numbers. Harden somewhere. James Harden, exactly. They couldn't keep him. A lot of people say, why they get rid of him? They could have kept him probably for one more year at that price, but after that, they would have had to give him a max contract, and they didn't have that money to afford. So, I just I'm looking at it from the standpoint of you are being talked about as considered one of the greats. You know what? Win three championships in a row. Do what the Bulls did not once but twice, and then come talk to me about being one of the greats. Because until they do that. Mm-hmm. It, I, I don't consider them to be one of the greatest teams ever. Yeah, you're going to win two championships back-to-back. Hey, that's great. That's wonderful. But do it with the squad that you have. And if you don't come together as a team because you feel you can be viable somewhere else and make more money somewhere else. And you know what? I'm never about people not getting their money. But right now, look at what has happened when people have transitioned from one team to the next to the next, thinking, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to get max money, and I'm going to make myself known. And we ain't heard about him in three years. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of that's the, just me. One of the most interesting things that I think is going on with the finals right now is you'd be hard-pressed to pick an MVP after five games in or four games in. They would you know, Sean Livingston was hands down the first game. 
Then Draymond Green took the third game hands down. And then you'd have to say probably Steph Curry last night played the best. So, I mean, literally, it's a coin flip as far as Golden State. Consistently across the board, I'm going Iguodala. I mean, he won it last year. You think they're going to give it to him yeah, again? I think so, because consistently coming off the bench, he's every time he steps on the court, I look at him and I just get mad. I get mad because I'm like, <laughs> Philly, why did you let this guy go? Well, you're just saying that because you're bitter, but I'm saying like, I am. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> have. Like, realistically, uh, it's it's legit hard to pick an MVP right now. So we're gonna see if I think if any of the three that I had mentioned, in, in, including Udala, if they go if they go off in the next game at home, whoever goes off the most is gonna get an MVP because I think they're winning in five now. Yeah. I All mean, right. so Monday's it. I mean, I, it. I, I think so. With that said, if Cleveland does somehow go there and pull it out. I think they can win at home, and then it would go to a game seven, and, which and would Golden be State still which I'm, I'm pulling for because let's be honest, there's no football going on right now. No, I agree. Hockey's about to end. Yes, I mean we need to root for something here, so we're rooting <laughs> for a game seven here on a whole nother level. Yeah, we are because that would that would give us another week of just talking about look at what has happened, look at what LeBron has done, and this is forecasting now saying that should Cleveland should they be successful and win game five, then go back home and win a game six. Then it's 3-3, three to three, and now it's a do-or-die game, game seven. Who's going to be the last man standing? Is it going to be the reigning champs with Steph Curry and Thompson and the rest of those guys, or is the arguably the best player in the world, is he going to do what nobody has ever been able to do, rally his team from a 3-1 deficit, and then go into the Oracle Arena on game seven and show everybody why LeBron James is the greatest player? I mean, that's, that's what it's going to come down to, and that's what we want here. I like that storyline. I'm telling that's you. That's a great storyline. Fantastic. But uh, I, I was just going ahead and looking at Andre Iguodala's numbers. So, see, this is why I don't think they would give it to him. Okay. 12 points, 7 points, 10 points, 11 points. And I understand his defensive presence and all that, but when they give out the MVP, majority of the time, all they do is look at stats. All right. So, All right, well, let's we'll take see. another break, gentlemen. When we come back, I want to get into a little more NBA. Of course, we have the AL East discussion that we're going to talk about because, you know, the Rays are here. Craig's a big Boston guy. Still waiting on Mr. Lindo to show up. We're going to find out where he's at. Plus that. He's and, been sleeping. He's yeah. been sleeping on us at a whole other level. That's all right. We'll get on it. <laughs> and then Craig mentioned it last week, and I'm very happy that he mentioned it last week because I got a lot to talk about when we break down the NFC East. You are listening to us. Hold on level. Remember, people, phone lines are open. 941-358-5701 on the Frisco Fades phone line. And you know what? His ears, the devil. his ears must be Speak ringing wow. because as I mentioned his name, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Dwayne Lindo joins us when we come right back. You are listening to us. Whole nother level. Were your ears burning? Whole nother level. Saturdays, 1 to 3 Eastern. They should have been a number one seed. They sh- I'm sorry. I think Michigan so, too. State should have been. A- oh, really? They got a- now you want to come on board no, 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 no. with the Big Ten. They got a good draw. Talking about getting a good seed. Well, no, I'm talking about Big Ten football. I was talking about Big Ten football. So, I mean, I want to be specific here. Completely Listen. different. Only on stlrmedia.com. And welcome back to Whole Nother Level. All right, his ears were burning. Fellas. Came in the building strong, too, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dwayne Lindo, what's going on, Fellas, man? Fellas, what's going on, man? I see I'm online right now live. Which Facebook is great. Live. Yes, Facebook right. Live. Man, you can't get any better than that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Lindo, we done spent the past 38 minutes talking about LeBron James. I'm sure. Steph I'm sure. Curry. Yes. The entire Golden State NBA Finals versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. So, let's get your take on it, sir. Well, what did you, you see last night? Oh, uh, what didn't I see last night? Okay. But, well, well, one thing everyone saw last night was Steph Curry, the Splash Brothers, basically getting up and playing. You know, scoring a combined of what, 66 points? I'm not even sure what it yeah, was. Yeah, 66. 66, yeah. 66, 65 points, whatever. You know, these guys finally stepped up. Last last game, game three, uh, Golden State didn't look that didn't look that great at all. Obviously, you know, they got a taste of their own medicine in game three, but... You know, Golden State, 3-1, and one, I think they're more than likely going to take it all the way, which we said, which I said personally, before the series even started. You were one of the few, my friend, because the rest of us sitting here all had Cleveland winning this game in six games. And we all switched to number. It's, it's over now, basically. Yeah, so, we all so, said yeah. Golden State is going to close it out at home next game. Oh, yeah. without question. I mean, even it, this is something we talked about last week, too, about Golden State's bench. Uh, these guys stepped up in game one and two because the Splash Brothers weren't, I mean, really weren't in it. But with the bench and with uh, with the Splash Brothers playing, I mean, there's, the sky's the limit for Golden State. I, I say they take it out the next game, and it's a, it's a wrap. All right, Dwayne, so let's pose the question to you that we've been talking about here. 
right here on a whole other level. Again, phone lines are open, people. 941-358-5701 on the Frisco Fades phone line. But, Dwayne, if you're one of the bench players, say a Sean Livingston or a Harrison Barnes or... Who played great last night, Barnes? He, he did. He did. If you're one of those gentlemen, if you have the opportunity to go get a max contract somewhere else or stay in Golden State for less money but have the potential to be a three-peat champion, what do you do? Well, I think it depends on your priorities. Uh, if, you, if you're about, you know, we've heard Steph Curry say, oh, I'm all about the team. You know, are you, you looking for MVP? No, he says he's not looking for MVP. He's looking to win championships. That's, this is out of Steph Curry's mouth. Okay. So if you're a player, uh, a Barnes, a Livingston, who's been on a million different teams, if you are one of these guys and are looking for championships, you're obviously staying there. I don't see anyone, for the most part, moving. But if you're looking for money, I mean, you're going to another team. It's just as simple as that. So, again, uh, the, the answer to your question is it depends on your priorities as a player. So let me ask you, put yourself in Sean Livingston's position, a guy who came out game one and just lit it up to oh, where yeah. people be he, – he almost became a household name. Oh, yeah. So let's say you get a championship with Golden State. Now you have the opportunity to go to another team – and maybe not, I mean, I won't say a max contract, but, you know, four years, $90 million. Or you stay in Golden State. <laughs> I, think you, I think that was a max contract. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do the math here. Yeah, all right, that's all right. a nice contract. Let's, 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 let's tail that back a little okay, bit. So say let's four say, years, 50 or 60 million. Four years, 60 million. Or you get a four-year contract with Golden State, but you're, only, you're making half of that, 30 million. What do you do? Look, I mean, you're talking about my personal opinion. Yes, I am. Um, Putting I, you in his situation. I, I, if he, about me, I want to go down in history as one of the best teams ever. So if you keep this team intact, uh, Sean Livingston stays here. I'm Sean Livingston. And I want to go down in history as being a dynasty, if you will. I'm going to stay. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to take the money and run. I'm going to stay in Golden State. Uh, try to make it uh, work, maybe another championship, uh, one, two championships in the next three, four years. I take the I, – I so say you're going to go down as being part of one of the great teams Absolutely. as opposed to taking the money. Absolutely. Okay. I'd rather be a legend than a broke bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you, and that's Honestly, the way I feel. Well, it's interesting that you said that because Sean Livingston's probably the only exception to that case that I, that, that I would say stay because he's been on a couple of different teams. He had a gruesome injury that people didn't even think he was going to come back from. He was playing in the D League and worked his way back up. So that's someone that you could possibly be like, hey, you could start for another team now other than coming off the bench, and you can make double your money, and you already have two rings to speak for. I'm probably gone. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you, got, you got Sean Livingston who's been on more than a couple different teams. He's been on, for the past decade, he's been on, remember, he came out of high school as a McDonald's. He played on the Nets for a while, yeah. Right, McDonald's uh -huh. All-American All -American, uh, phenom. And he's played for, I think, eight different teams. Wow. So Damn. you got to understand that, okay, I, I want a home. I want a dynasty. Mm -hmm. I want uh, 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 multiple championships. Uh, I mean, I could understand take the money and run. I can understand that wholeheartedly. Okay. Don't, don't get me wrong. No, I but did. again, you asked my opinion. Yeah, I did. And if I was Sean Livingston, I would stay in Golden State and become a dynasty. Okay. One more question for you, sir. I know we're putting you on the spot here today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Just do it. How do you feel like Nike, Nike. about <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel Kevin Love and his impact? Is he worth signing him and keeping him in Cleveland? I don't know. Um, it's funny because you hear Mark Jackson is not a big fan of, of Love, uh, you know, saying that he's better coming off the bench as opposed to starting. Mm -hmm. Um Defense, I guess, is a is an issue with love, and from a lot of from a the Cleveland standpoint, well, we all fans, realize that, <laughs> right, right. From a Cleveland fan standpoint, I think most of them realize that as well. That love is kind of lacking in the defense department. Um, I don't know if you keep love because the you know you have quite a few players for Cleveland, a couple bench players that have stepped up and gotten the job done. We saw that in Game Three, so I. Uh, I don't know. That's a tough question. That's something management is really going to have to think long and hard about and try to figure that out. So LeBron Brace just, just needs to make the decision is what you're saying <laughs> on whether they're going to keep him or not. Wait a minute. I thought Lou was making the decisions here. 
<laughs> if you believe that, if you believe <laughs> that, my friend, you truly are on a whole nother level. Let me just say that. All right, guys. With that, um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, because we're all saying the game's over as of Monday. I, I yeah. I, I I can't. I really can't see Golden State losing in Oakland on Monday. I don't see it. Yeah. So they'll be back to back champions. They will have the best record in the NBA. I'll ask the question, and I'm still even a little skeptical to say yes, but I'll at least ask it to you, gentlemen. Do they or are they considered one of the greatest teams? You can put them in the conversation. Okay. But I wouldn't say just yet. All right. So two championships back-to-back, also the best record in the entire NBA, <clears throat> and you're saying we can now throw them in the conversation. Throw them in the conversation. All well, right. I, I say – I say, yeah, you have to. I mean, they've taken an element, and this this particular uh, element that I'm talking about is this whole three-point shot. Uh, they've taken that and taken it, and again, I'm going to take the whole, you know, the saying here, the whole nother level. There you go. Um, and th- they've ran with it. Um, we plug our show shamelessly. <laughs> <laughs> he does his at work, too. It's weird. Like, he just throws his whole nother level in anytime he wants to. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just took that phone call to a whole nother level. No, it's funny. He'll shout it out, too, when he's... Not, no, nobody's talking. He just shouts it out. It's weird. Well, I mean, hey, it's <laughs> so weird. Hold another level. What are hey, if it, talking it, about? If He's it, hiding behind the wall. Yeah. <laughs> if it fits your specific narrative, so be it. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Dwayne. He's at the water know. cooler. <laughs> Hold another level. He's <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they've taken, the whole, they've taken this three-point shot and, you know, and ran with it. So, I mean, as it, are they one of the best teams? If they win the championship, I think they are. All right, Craig, let me ask you. I have a hard I, – I might be the minority for this. I have a hard time comparing errors, and that is something that I've always had a hard time with. Uh, you know, I realized that you, you were allowed to play defense back in the day, and the way they did play defense was a completely different than what they do now. Same thing with other sports as well. Um, I've always been uh, the person that kind of, like, lives in this time. So I would say that they're the best team now, obviously. Right. Um, they won the best ever regular season, 73 wins. If they win again, which I assume everybody thinks they're going to do, that's two in a row. Steph Curry's won MVP, uh, season MVP, what, two years running now too? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I would say that most people think that Steph Curry's <clears throat> past LeBron is the best player in the game now and that Golden State's been cons- consistent as being the best team the last couple of years. So, yeah, you'd, you'd have to put them in the conversation. But like I said, I have a hard time comparing errors. Like, I don't think any team was better than that. You can bo- say they're Bulls the run. best team of this era. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. era. Yeah. Right. Well, but, let me ask you- and I'm, I'm going with Craig on this. With other eras, there's so many other teams that are better. Than yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, Craig, let me ask you this. You're, you're saying that Steph Curry has surpassed LeBron James in terms of being it, the face <laughs> or the, the, the icon of the NBA, if you will? And I think that's what LeBron's having a hard time dealing with right now. There's a lot of pressure with him on the final. This will be his third straight final and his third straight loss in the finals, believe it or not, for LeBron. And then he sees Steph Curry win two in a row and win the MVP of the regular season two years in a row, too. So there's a change in guard at the top, and I think a lot of young people are, are basically protesting this. I think that – I had this conversation with a friend yesterday. If I was to start a team today – who would be my first draft pick? And we actually kind of drafted out here. And uh, so I said, all right, well, I get first pick then. And I still went with LeBron. I went with LeBron. He went with Curry. I came back and went with Durant. He went with Westbrook. So I mean, he, he went with two guards. And so then I was, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to fill out my whole roster now. So I had, I had Anthony Davis, Lamarcus Aldridge. And then I think I had, who was my, my first? I had, my point guard was Damian Lillard. And then he picked uh, DeMarcus Cousins, uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard and I think uh, James James uh, Harden. So when I went with that, I'm like, my team's gonna kill his. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have, yeah. I have LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard. I mean, I have a squad. So I think when you do that, m- me personally, I'm still picking LeBron if I have a draft tomorrow. But a lot of people, I think their their conversation has changed in the the aspect that I'm gonna pick. You know, possibly Steph Curry. I'm still going with LeBron as the as the best right now because. He's, he's LeBron. He can do it all by himself. Steph Curry's good because he has a great supporting cast with him. LeBron's not really working with a whole lot much in Cleveland right now. At the end of the day, though, it is about the team. But right? he's been too damn passive yeah. in the finals. He's I, been too passive. I agree. That's, that was my whole thing. I said this at, at the top of the show. Why did it become the Kyrie Irving show? This is your team. You grew up in Cleveland. This is your squad. You need to take charge. You want to be GM, owner, coach, Man, man up. Take it all. I don't care. Put it on your shoulders. They, he but cannot remind, be stopped. 
Remind yeah. everybody you are the best player in the world and remind people who you are. Kobe's gone. Forget about Kobe. Kobe's gone. We, we ain't worried about Kobe no more. But you're letting Steph Curry come in and just rain on your parade, bro. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, too, you're going to have your off days as well. You know, we saw, I mentioned off the top, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, they had bad games. Yeah. Uh, the first the first two first games. First two, three games, man. Right, the first three games. But exactly. nobody's going to talk about it now because they're up three to one now, and Steph had an awesome game right, last right, game. Right, right, right. So he's getting a pass, basically. He didn't play well the first couple of games, but his team was still winning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, LeBron's got one up on him, though. He won't be the star of Space Jam 2. <laughs> When's that coming out? Though? I don't Pretty know. Soon, I actually. heard that. I heard it that. It could be yeah. a Space Jam 3, then. That's true. Star and Curry. That's right. <laughs> That's yeah. But, you know, I have one question here. I mean, uh, what does – I mean, we've all agreed – I'm assuming we've all agreed here that Golden State more than likely will take the championship. Am yes. I right? Let's just, let's okay, just okay, pencil okay. it in. Yeah. Pencil okay. it in. Okay. 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 It's never happened before guess, yeah. in the NBA Finals. They already come back 3 one Never. It's zero – what? Teams are 0-32? Yes. Yeah, something like that. They already gave them the trophy. It's already been handed out. Right, right. So, I guess the question I have now is what does – Cleveland have to do at this point to win in Oakland? I mean, what do they have to do? Even just to get this game, what do they have to do? They, they need, need to a, take somebody out. They man. need a priest. You better they send in Del- Delvanova at somebody's knees and they didn't hear from me. Buddha. <laughs> they need some witchcraft. They need, they need, I don't know what they need. They need a miracle. Right. Put a rain dance, do something, but they need a miracle out of this. I don't know what they got to do. They have to make so many adjustments going back into Oakland. It's insane. They need to rent some Halloween costumes. I Maybe a Dwayne Wade lookalike, a Chris Bosh lookalike. They might have to a call Ray in Allen a Allen lookalike. Ray Allen. They might have to call in a bomb threat just to delay the game. I don't know what they have to do. They need a miracle. They need a miracle. Uh-huh. I mean, it's it's funny. I, I, I pose this question because I've asked a few people this question, and not a, not a lot of people can answer this. I mean. Uh, Really answer it. I mean, I mean, with I, I just don't. It's just it's well, the only impossible. team all postseason, basically all regular season too. Only a couple of teams that have gone to Golden State and won is Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. So this Oklahoma City team was awesome. Dwayne, I'll answer your question for you, my brother. Let me put it to you like this: What needs to happen? Game five, Monday night, Oracle Arena. Your backs are against the wall. You are now facing three game sevens essentially. If you're Cleveland. Okay. Every single game is a game seven. Because if you lose one, done. Over. The right. last thing you want to do is have Golden State come in your house and beat you for a game six should you prove to be successful Monday night. So here's what needs to happen. LeBron James needs to go to his team and say, from this point forward, mm-hmm. you follow my direction. And if you can't do that, then don't show up. Because I'm not going to let my city down. They believe in me to bring them a championship. I know I got the heart to do it. Y'all need to find it in yourselves to do the exact same thing. And if you can't do that, don't bother getting on the plane. Don't bother stepping into the arena. Don't bother showing up at all. You can be a spectator. Don't even come into the arena. You get to watch from home on the TV, and I will show you how to do what nobody else has done. Two words for LeBron on that one. Good luck. I agree. (laughs) But if that's what you're asking me what needs to happen, that needs to happen. Right. He he needs to play better because he played awful last game. He needs to take charge. It's blames on him, too. He didn't play great. He would drive to the lane every time, and then he would get caught up and not know what to do with the basketball. He actually looked like a rookie out there at times, which is play like you played confusing. Game, play like like you played in game three, and all will be fine. Stop you, facilitating. Yeah, you know the thing is too. I, I, I don't see how folks could have. I really don't see how folks picked Cleveland to win this series prior <laughs> to the series. No, the reason being is because I mean it's it's, it's simple mathematics here. <laughs> Cleveland, uh, Cleveland. We're going Ga- in analytics now. Right, yeah, oh, Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, 20, 22, 23 losses in the Eastern Conference. Golden State Warriors, what seven, eight, nine losses? Nine, nine losses in, in the, the Western, Western Conference. Yeah. It's simple math. I mean, I, so I mean, right. I, I, I just you're again, right. you know. It's so just, what you're saying is the team with a better record always wins. No, 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 no. Uh, well, obviously this. It's a much better record. <laughs> He's like, wait, maybe I did. <laughs> no, well, in, in a in a sense, I did, but. You got to understand they had uh, they had 22 losses. Cleveland had 22 losses in the Eastern Conference. Yes. No, I see what you're saying. Dwayne. Right. I do. Right. To, but to, I mean, to come out of the West West with that kind of record, yeah, you're going to do pretty well the playoffs. Right. Right. And that's all I'm saying. Well, you battle tested, so you get it. Mm-hmm. All right. With that, we are going to take a break. When we come back, as we do each and every week here on Whole Other Level, 
We are going to dive into the NFL, and Craig was so kind to say this week, we are going to do the NFC, NFC East, East which features the Redskins, the New York football giants, <laughs> that team Cowboys. in Texas that we don't care less about, and of course, <laughs> yes, you know it is, the Philadelphia Eagles. So, with that being said, I want to thank everybody on Facebook for chiming in. i got to put y'all down because I only got 15% battery life left. Anyhow, with that, we're going to take one last break. Again, you are listening to us. Hold on the level on stlrmedia.com. Be right back. Saturdays, 1 to 3 Eastern. Point I'm trying to make before I was rudely interrupted by Eric. The point I'm... <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Only on Sky's The Limit Radio. Entertainment with no ceilings. And welcome back to Whole Nother Level. All right, as we do each and every Saturday here at Whole Nother Level, it wouldn't be our show if we didn't do football. Craig started it last week. We'll keep it going this week. We are going to break down my favorite division, because it is my division, the NFC East. So with that being said, gentlemen, I don't know exactly where you want to start. Just know that when you hit Philadelphia, I got a lot to say. Why don't we keep you last? Yeah, Philly's going last. Philly's going last. They love me. They that's, do. that's what place the Y'all lives. really like me. So where y'all want to start? We can start. Let, let's just start up at the top then. Let's go uh, the old NYGs All right. in the house. New York uh, Giants with Dwayne G-Man. Lindo. Mr. McAdoo. All right, Mr. Lindo. So let me ask you a question. First and foremost, is this the farewell tour of Eli Manning? Uh, I, I think he has a couple more years in him. I, I don't think so. Okay. I, I don't think so. I'm not, and I've, I've said this in previous shows, I'm not a big fan of the new uh, the new uh, skipper or the coach or the manager, whatever the heck you want to call him, uh, Coach McAdoo. I mean, I usually call him <laughs> McAdoo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the defense, uh, the Giants defense last year, just uh, horrible. Anemic? Yes, it, horrible. I don't see it. I mean, we'll win the first game against Dallas, but – other than that, I, I don't got, see. I got your back, bro. Yeah, in hey, Dallas. Hey, at, I got your at back Dallas. on that one. Yeah, in Dallas. But, I mean, other than that, I, I don't see. I mean, really, I see a little above 500 in terms of the season. Wow, really? So, so let me ask you this then. So you don't like any of the offseason moves? You, you got Janoris Jenkins, which I think is an uh, above-average corner. Right. Uh, that's played really, really well in spots in that'll formerly help. St. Louis, not yes, LA Rams. That'll help our defense, um, without you, question. You snagged uh, Olivier Vernon from the Miami Dolphins uh, for pass rushing ability. Probably overpaid him a little bit, but at the same time, you still needed someone to get to the quarterback. Right, we did discuss that last week, actually. Um, so what do you think about like what you've done on defense just in that? You, then you had a decent draft as well. So I think that you guys have made some improvements in areas that you needed to make improvements. Yeah, yeah. Um, with uh, Eli Apple, the, the first draft. Eli Apple, yeah, yep. The corner, another corner. So, so he can I mean, he can possibly start maybe. I let's be honest. The New York Giants along with maybe Atlanta and, well, the Saints, they were awful too. Uh, they had the worst secondary mm-hmm. in the NFL. You, mm-hmm. You'd score. you put points on the board with Odell Beckham and company, <laughs> but at the same time, you'd give up more points. Right, right. You know? I mean, if we can – if we can, our defense could get seven on average, maybe seven to ten points less a game. I mean, that would be – I mean, that would be perfect. But, again, I don't know. I, I, I really don't see it happening. Who knows? I got a question from the audience. Um, <laughs> Mr. Lindo. Is Salsa dancing himself, Victor Cruz, coming back, man? That's what I want to know. Is he coming back? Because, honestly, here's what I will say to you. We need another slot receiver. That's, I, a, that's all th- there Okay, is but yeah. this is my question to you. This is what the world's been waiting on, bro. They've been waiting on Victor Cruz on one side and OBJ on the other, and we have not seen it. I will put it to you like this. You put those two guys together on the field at the same time, it's Eli. He could throw it whatever way he wants to, Okay. But we haven't seen it, and I think that's been the reason why your offense has been lackluster in producing because Eli is used to having those weapons, and you don't have them. So is Victor Cruz coming back? Well, he actually, he should be. Um, he's, uh, he's on the roster, obviously. Yes. But, uh, I mean, with uh, Odell Beckham on one side and Victor Cruz on the other, I mean, it would be a perfect, perfect wide receiver core. But uh, I, th- I think he possibly does, but I, I don't know. At this point... He's been out for so long. I mean, I, he's again, been out for over a year and a half now with the right. injury. He's had plenty of time to recover from the injury and strength train. I guess the issue last year was the tendon still wasn't properly healing right. well. He couldn't get in and out of his breaks well. But I think now, from what I've picked up, that he supposedly is going to be ready for the start of the regular season. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how much he'll play in preseason. You did lose Ruben Randall. 
Yeah, um, thank you, by the way. He's on the Phillies I list. appreciate that. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but I think that you need to do a better job in incorporating the running backs. Shane Vereen you got from New England. He's a great pass catcher. I don't think you, Eli utilized him enough. And that might have been an issue with – you know, the offensive coordinator last year and issues with Tom Coughlin and whatever else it might be. So going forward with the new regime, I think you need to better utilize Shane Vereen. Larry Donnell came out of nowhere to be a pretty formidable tight end last year as well. And then Victor Cruz just continues to develop. He's going to draw the best corner on the other side, so he's going to need some help sometimes. Um, you know, teams are going to go away from just that single cornerback on him. They're going to put a safety over the top and do whatever they do to contain an Odell Beckham. So if you get a Victor Cruz back, you know, running those fly routes where Eli can just kind of chuck it up there, it's going to open the field for everyone else. And uh, Jennings, too. Rashad Jennings, I mean, if he could step it up as well, I mean, I think he'd have a good running back core. And I know you mentioned Vereen as well, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, Vereen's a scat back that I think is really good for that offense. So I think that if you utilize him more than you did last year, because he had he had spots last year where he really shined, and then the next game you'd completely go away from him, you know? So, so you are going to London this year, Dwayne. Yes. You are playing the Rams, and you are the away team. So let me ask you this question, because thankfully you have a bye after that. But I just want to take your first four games, <laughs> all right? You're at the Cowboys. Your home opener is against the Saints. Then you play the Redskins. Then you go to Minnesota. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, at the Cowboys, Dwayne, I am your biggest fan. Well, yeah, I'm sure you I'm, are. I'm, I'm with you, that's, bro. Well, that's obvious. I'm with you. It's I the mean, 4 o'clock first Sunday game, that is America's game of the week. We get to see you go into J World and do what you do best, bro. Just tore up, tear up Terry Rombo. Tony Rombo, I don't even care about this. Yeah, name. I mean, whatever. I mean, I don't, I'm, again, I'm not sold on Dallas. Saints, I'm not sold on the Saints either. Hold I think on a our second. first test. Okay. Hold on a second. The Saints, I think, is going to be a test for you. And here's my reason why. Are you kidding me? No, wait a minute. With that I, defense? That's the what? easiest out of the four Come games. Come on. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Last time the Giants and the Saints played each other, that was a Madden exclusive. The game was well, 51 yeah. to 48. Well, we didn't have any defense. That's Neither team did. Neither, Neither, Neither team did. Come yeah. on. What I'm saying to you You got Rob Ryan out. Now you <laughs> have a defense. <laughs> right. We don't know what the new look defense of the New Orleans Saints is going to be. So you're lucky you're home for this one. Spagnola, listen, unless he makes some serious changes, your defense is not going to be as good. They're going to be just as horrible as they were last year. See, this is a whole new look Saints defense. That's why I say to you, don't jump the gun on this Saints game. Well, you it know. may shock you. The Redskins, they're coming to you. You'll split with them. I just don't know. But that's, that's where I we get the first matchup. Week three. Josh that's what I'm Norman, saying. I think, Odell Beckham. Right. That, and again, I think that's going to be uh, a game to remember, to be honest with you. Okay. I mean, to me, I disagree with you with the Saints, the oh, Saints Giants matchup. Fair enough. I think uh, as, as much as I'm not sold with the Giants, I think they'd be able to handle the Saints and obviously the Cowboys. But I think, again, the Redskins are going to be our first test, even though it's at the Meadowlands. Okay. For so us. you're saying in the first four games, well, the first three, let's just take the first three games, you're saying two and one to start the season. I think, yes. Okay. I, that's See, fair. I, I think you have to go 2-2 two and two to fair. start the season if you're the Giants. You have actually a pretty tough schedule here. I'm looking at this right I now. I mean, look, they go to Minnesota, then they go right to Green Bay. At, at Minnesota, which was a playoff team from a year ago, they're going to improve. Yep. I think they've done some good things in the offseason. At the Packers, they're going to improve. And let's not throw out the Ravens in the next game. The Ravens, they lost pretty much every key piece of their offense and defense last year, and they were still competing. So they're going to get all those players back plus a good draft. So I think that slate right there. And, and whatever you guys want to say about the Cowboys, they're going to have Romo for the first week. They're going to have Dez for the first <laughs> and, and week. They're going to have Zeke Elliott for the first week. And they're at home for the first You'll week. You'll have Romo for the first week, and that's the only week they'll have. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, yeah. He's done after that. <laughs> Pretty much. My, my he does have a rubber collarbone. My, my so. thoughts about the Giants is they, they remind me of the San Diego Chargers. They start off good, and then they hit snooze, and then pfft, that's the rest of the season. So I see them going 4-1 in the first four games, and then after that, they do have a pretty tough schedule. Four and one. Wow. They do. The, the only I see a little bit of a, a breather loss? in their schedule where they have the Bears and at Browns. I think those are two wins those yeah, are two that they could wins. easily get. But then again, they're at the Steelers and they have a division game with the Cowboys. Don't really know what you're going to get from the Lions from year to year. And then at Eagles, at Redskins. So if there's a division up for grabs and you got to go on the road the last two games, it's pretty tough. Yeah. Pretty tough there. All right. So let, do you want to throw out some early predictions or you want to wait till we go through all four teams? Um, I mean, we can go. Um, what do you think we're going to be? Let's start with you, Eric. Let's just get, let's just give an overall record right now for the for the Giants. All right, overall looking, record looking for at the, the Giants. Schedule. Looking at this whole entire schedule. Oh my god! So goodness. at Cowboys, let's just go down the line. Fine. At, if at Cowboys, me, if you, win or loss. I'm saying win. 
Okay, Saints, win or loss? Win. Redskins, at home, win or loss? Loss. Okay, at Vikings? Loss. At Packers? Loss. Home to the Ravens? They'll win that game. At the Rams? They'll win. They're in London. They'll win that game. Okay. Then they have the Eagles at home. You, you can't. <laughs> Is that I'm, a question? Yeah, I'm biased. <laughs> okay. Next. At, I'm, er, Bengals at home hosting them. Sunday night game, flex schedule. Depending on where the Bengals are at that point, I, I, I'm going to say Giants. See, this that's a squeaker for me because on Sunday night, Giants step up. And I'm, I'm nervous. So I'll side with the Giants and say they beat the Bengals. Okay. Bears, Browns, win win. Win win. Steelers, okay. you'll at, lose. At Steelers, you'll lose. Cowboys at home. Oh, I want you to beat them. <laughs> They're going to split. Let's be honest. They're okay, fine. So you, you won week one. You'll lose week 14. The Lions? <sighs> December. I pretty much you're going to be sewing up stuff, and the Lions will be out of it, so they won't care. <laughs> you, said, you just said it exactly. It's December. Lions are going to lose. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, at Eagles and at Redskins. Red, the last game. Uh, you can't like I said. You can't ask me about the Eagles because I'm I'm biased. At so that's basically an Eagles win. Well, I'm, I'm yeah, saying we're going to beat you twice. But <sighs> you know what? For argument's sake, I'll say we'll split. We'll beat you at home. You'll beat us at home. No, I mean, vice. You'll win on your home turf. I'll win on my home right, turf. Right. So split one and one at the Redskins week 17. What are we at right now for him? What does that put him at? <clears throat> Nine, I think. Nine. Yeah. Nine and seven. That'll no. I'm. You know what? I'll give you ten and six. Woo! That's wow. funny because I wow. I'm I'm exactly going to go there because when I look at it, I see Lions is a win, Browns Bears win. I see Saints is a win. I see Rams is a win. So I see five to six wins roughly right at the top. Right. I think they split with a couple of uh, divisions and then they'll squeak out a couple of wins where nobody thinks they're going to win it. Right. So I'm do you have you. them? You have so them winning the division? Or? No. Oh, no. No. Have, no okay. I have you win. I have you going ten and six. That's my pick right now. Giants ten and six. Actually, I'm going eleven and five. You're going all right. Craig's going eleven because and I five. do have them winning the division. I'm going six and ten. You're going six and ten. Dwayne, Sorry, Dwayne. Eight and eight. Dwayne's going eight and eight. So Dwayne, me, eleven and five is Craig, and then Evan. Okay. Moving Sorry, right Dwayne. Along. I had to go six and ten. So I'm, ag- I'm actually going with the Giants to win the division. Look, it or I, not. I would, I would probably side with you than the whole ten and six or whatever these guys. <laughs> but are saying, listen to, to me. be honest. I mean, again, I'm, I'm a Giants fan. But I know. I'm, I'm looking at it realistically. I, I did look at it realistically, Dwayne. I did. Honest okay. to God, I looked at it realistically. And what I'm saying to you is, you bought JPP back. He's deciding whether he decides to play with a club or without a club, whatever you want to he's call holding, it. Is he holding the tee? He's playing the, with the club. Is he holding? No, he said he was. Are they not, kicking off his finger? He's I, holding the tee down. I don't know what he's doing, but <laughs> what I'm Nobody saying gets to that, you is, I was putting up fingers no, here. I, I know it's yeah. only three of them. Though. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying to you is, your team is one of those teams, and we've always said this. We said this last season. The Giants are so unpredictable. You're not sure what they're going to do. <laughs> there are several games that I could very easily flip flop. What I will give you though is. If Eli is going to get back into the postseason, and it's happened because he's done it consistently over a four-year span, like he'll be he'll he'll bottom out for like two years, be mediocre the next year, and then that final in the four-year span, he'll be back in the postseason. And I think with the Giants this year, we might see them as a wild card. So for me, that's why I'm saying ten and six. I think with the the key thing with the Giants is, and they've been, been they've been lacking this the past few years. If they Establish some kind of running game that takes a little bit of pressure off of him. They it haven't does. had anything in the backfield. No, the need a little help on the offensive line. I yeah. think that secondary man, but that's why you got Janoris Jenkins. You drafted Eli Apple. You got some pass rushing ability now, so I think that's going to win them two to three more games. Which is why you know what? I'm weighing back and forth. Scratch that eleven. I think eleven is <laughs> too high. Put ten though. Okay. I think they're going to win ten, ten games. Six. It's hard for me to actually put anybody. In the uh, NFC East of 11 games, I think, right now. 10 and 6. All right, fair enough. Yeah, you know, the running game last year, there was, uh, <clears throat> uh, I think it's their third or fourth running back, the Giants, uh, Orleans Darkwa, out of 200. <laughs> no, no. Is he going to get the, the starting no, nod? No, now? no, no. I'm not saying he is, but I'm just saying he stepped up. There's a couple games where he stepped up, especially Yeah, I know. You, p- you picked him up in fantasy. <laughs> And Did I really? He picked him up in fantasy last year, and I was like, <laughs> who is this? I can't even pronounce his name. I also see Eli getting hurt during mid-year, and then B.J. Daniels takes over the job and wins and then takes him to the Super Bowl. That's, that's just a yeah. that's 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 U.S. Yeah, yeah, that's that's U.S. That's 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 a bull talking right there. Dun, 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 dun. 
He's playing with JPP. It's just like old times. Ladies hey, man, and gentlemen, why, why? we've gone from whole another level to the <laughs> USF show. Welcome. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, Craig, why are you, why, uh, why are you hating on Arlene's dark one, I'm man? I'm just I saying mean, he's a four-string <laughs> four running back, and I see somebody added him on fantasy. I mean, <laughs> and I was like, who did this? Of course, Dwayne. Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne were you drunk he was, that No, night? he's reaching, boy. He, he's like, man, my season's not going. I'm reaching. Well, first of all, I, I, I have see, an excuse. There was nobody I else available? An, look, I have an excuse. Nobody? First of all, we were talking about a two-quarterback league, and, and I realized Arlene's dark one's not a quarterback. <laughs> but I swear, man, I mean, all my guys were going down like, like dominoes, man. I mean, he can attest to it. The way we pick guys, a guy, two weeks later, injured out. Wow. Yeah, all my guys were going down like dominoes, and Craig can attest to it. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. I can see I if mean, maybe I'm you were like, drunk one I'm, night and it was I'm, late. You, can barely, and you, you can barely feel the roster. Come on, dude, I was, I was picking quarterbacks that are not that haven't even played. I'm like, okay. He had, he had EJ Manuel on the roster. I'm, I'm not like, even okay, kidding. Listen. He really did. <laughs> Look, I'm like, okay. He was guy, hoping for an injury so he could start him. Yeah, basically, that was it. That was it. Because I didn't thinking, have any uh, He's thinking Ryan Leaf made an appearance back, too. <laughs> also, Jamarcus <laughs> Russell. Achilles Smith is back in the league. Wow. Okay, now, okay. All right. Achilles Smith, <laughs> Jamarcus Russell. Okay, wow. 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 I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, neither do I. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to try and keep I mean, I'm being going. serious. That's right. And we're, no, we're going to get into fantasy more this year because Eric Wilson's playing for the first time. I don't I know am. if L. Bushman, you're playing, but hey, we're going to have a. I play every we're year. We're going to have a fantasy league with all four of us and oh. some other guys too, probably a 14 team league because we want it competitive. And then we're going to bring up some fantasy every Craig, so, I was so shocked to find out he had never played fantasy. Trust me, I tried to get him to play and, and he was. Uh, I don't want to play. I just haven't played in so long. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, dude, if you're not rooting for a team, it makes you root for players. So it's right, so much better right. than what if you're watching a Monday Night Football or Sunday Night Football and you don't care about the teams. I mean, you're still going to watch because you're a football fan, but it makes it more interesting. I, I just couldn't believe he never plays. Like, I've never played before. I'm like, are you lying to me, right? He's like, nope. no, I've never played. I'm like, never, I know I've, women oh, that have played fantasy hooked. football. He's going to be hooked. Never it only fantasy. takes a year oh, to really yeah, get yeah. into it. I didn't play for a long time either. And then it, back in 2005, I get, I kept having folks, hey, come on, man, you got to play, you got to play. And then finally I played, and I kind of get into it. I mean, I'm even playing, I'd love to play fantasy baseball as well. I didn't play this year because I couldn't really find a league. But, I mean, fantasy baseball is great for me as well. And I would be. <laughs> it's only great if you have time. And time <laughs> is something Dwayne Lindo does not have, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, yeah. but I mean, I can sneak, I can sneak up. <laughs> I have my computer at work. I'm like, okay, you know, and kind of look at, you know, guys, look at my I've, roster. And I've got to use the restroom real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got to say this, guys. I got to say this real quick. Go ahead. Uh, the, the downfall of my season for fantasy football. Here, I'm telling you right now. These two players. Taking Johnny I, Manziel. Tony no. Romo. Colin Kaepernick. Oh, yeah. And that was it. Yep. Oh. It was, it was it, done. Yeah, it was done. Dwayne so, had to put in Blaine Gabbard. Yes! Blaine he Gabbard might. and Brandon Whedon were his two yes. starters at one point. Brandon Whedon and Blaine Gabbard. Do you everyone, need a hug right now? Yeah. Do you need a hug? <laughs> everyone doubled up all the, and all the quarterbacks. And, and something Darqua. <laughs> I don't even know his first name. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't field a roster, dude. Like, you, all those players went undrafted in every fantasy league. You could have picked up Michael Vick. He could have started for you. Heck, it would have been better than any quarterback I had oh, put together. My goodness. That's all the right. problem. We he got, actually played last year. We got to keep going. Oh, my Eric, goodness. Eric, I'm going to warn you, though. Once you play, it's like heroin. You I have know. to keep going with I, it. And I've you, heard that. You go from one team to playing with six teams and not knowing what to do. I know. Boy, it's like being on that heroin, dog. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Being happens. on that heroin. It happens, man. Anyhow. That black tar. Boom, heroin. <laughs> the Indianapolis Colt running back, he's available. Might go with the Trent Richardson experience again. Oh, he uh, he predicted himself to be a Hall, a Hall of, Famer, of Famer. Trent Richardson, future Pre Hall of Famer. He predicted himself to come back I strong and be a Hall of Famer. Wow. Well, this he, is not a lie. Look, I mean, he's in is, Baltimore, right? The, yes, he's in Baltimore. Okay. Now. The I mean, is, they do need a running back. Yeah, but the thing is, he wants to he wants to revive his. I mean, his career has not that, been that great, obviously, in the NFL. But he wants to make a statement, and I see why. I see where he was going with this. He's he wants to make a statement. This will be the third time he's revived it. Well, he wants to make a statement. This is it. I mean, if he can't do it this year, then I, I well, he know. made a statement. Let's see if he can back it up. I know. Well, yeah, I guess that's that's the key, obviously. I mean, <laughs> let's get, start with one good season. Watch right, him get right, hurt right. in the preseason. He's out the rest of the year. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. He had a Hall of Fame preseason. <laughs> I rushed for 600 yards in that one preseason. <laughs> Anyhow, moving forward, let's move on to the team that I can't stand, <clears throat> and that is the Dallas Cowboys. And you know what? You're right. Tony Romo will be healthy for one game. One game. That's it. But, I mean, we have to ask the question. Now they've got Ezekiel Elliott. You know, what is this team – what are they going to do when Tony Romo goes down? I mean, I've asked that question numerous times over, but is this the Tony Romo farewell tour? 
Honestly, if he gets injured one more time, well, does he just need to go on and retire? If he breaks his collarbone again, yeah, because yeah. that thing's already made of rubber. I think he's going to end up like really, really tearing something like a vital organ at this point. It's just going to spear off and like hit him. In did, the- did they bring <laughs> back Whedon again to be his backup? No, no, no. no. who is the backup? Now? Whedon went to they dra- Who did they? Dra- uh, they drafted um, uh, Dak Prescott. Okay, yeah. Dak but Prescott, which actually I think is a, a pretty decent draft pick. Don't not they bad. still have Kellen Moore? Kellen Moore is still there as well. Okay. And who was the, there was a backup uh, uh, after Whedon? They picked him off off uh, waivers. Stephen Morris, maybe? No, not Stephen Morris. Um, not out of University of Miami. It was uh, Castle, Matt Castle. Uh, he's good, yeah, right? he's gone too. He's I gone. think. Right, right, right. Yeah. He's, he's gone. gone. Yeah, yeah. Castle is he's gone. But they okay. couldn't win one game between him and Whedon last year. About eight eight games. Eight games. Like that. That's like ridiculous. Eight that was games. crazy. I'm like, are you serious? Like, Me and Eric were just predicting a win every week, just, right. just to be right once. We were wrong eight times. <laughs> I was like, all right. I mean, I don't even like them, but they got to win one. Yeah, you got Kellen Moore, Dak Prescott, Tony Romo, and they got uh, Jameel Showers. Okay, so he's going to – From Alpine, Who? Texas. He's yeah, un- he'll, he was undrafted. He'll get yeah. some preseason reps while he Romo's to, out. Uh, he, he, went to, he went to UTEP. That's right, yeah. That's right, yeah. So, um, all right. So, Dallas Cowboys, let's look at their schedule. All right. First off, they start off with the Giants. That's a loss. I'm sorry. It just is. They, and then they go to at the Redskins. Redskins. I'm saying 0 and 2. They'll win against the Bears, if you ask me. They'll beat the 49ers, even though it's in 49er country. They'll lose to the Bengals. They'll lose to the Packers. Can't ask me about Weed 8 because I'm biased. They will beat the Browns. They'll lose to the Steelers. Ravens, again, that's a game that could go either way. So, you know what? I'll err on the side of fine. I'll give you a game. Mm hmm. You'll split with the Redskins because it's back in Jerry World. Now, this is all barring that Tony Romo stays healthy. Okay. Okay. So, right now you got them at five wins, and they're going to the Vikings. <sighs> They'll lose that game. At Giants. They'll win that game. Bucks. December. Make See, your, here's the make thing. Make a good decision if on Tony that one, Romo, well, Well, here's the thing. If Tony Romo makes it to December, do you know his record in December is like – He's more on the plus than he is on the negative. I don't see him. I don't see him making it to December though. That, but I'm saying we're we're saying this barring health and injury, and I'm saying if Tony Romo plays in the month of December, he's gonna win. Okay. So, so, you, get, so you give him the box. I give him the, the box. I give him the Lions, and I've already made my prediction. I even have it clipped up, and I'll put it out there for the people. IRA said that there is no chance in hell Dallas is coming into the link January first, 2017. Mark it on your calendar. It ain't fitting to happen. We are Dallas is getting their ass. Who's your quarterback? By I don't care who our quarterback is at that time. Who's your receiver? We are not other going. than Jordan Matthews. You really had to Ruben go Randall there, is. He's our running back. Ru- oh no, actually he's no a, Ruben he's Randall. Randall. He's, he's our receiver. He's currently injured, by the way, off season surgery. <sighs> I'm still saying. And then it's you not got someone happen. that's going through rape allegations. We won't go there today. You already you already started bring it up, but I'm saying <laughs> Dallas is not going to lose the last. He was they're going to lose the last game. Who wasn't? <laughs> Um, so what does that have Dallas at for me? You got you said they're going to lose it, so you got them at seven and nine. Okay, fair yep. enough. Dallas is at seven and nine. That is my prediction for this season. Dallas is at seven and nine. Mr. L. Bushman, I will defer to you, sir. I'm actually agreeing with you on that. I had them going seven and nine as well, barring the fact if Romo stays healthy. Okay, yeah, that's the key question. That's that the is, key that is. thing right here. What I like about what they did in the draft is what they need to reestablish is that running game, what they had with DeMarco Murray. With that offensive line, you have a three-headed monster right now. McFadden picked up Elliott in the, in the draft. And who else they got? Alfred Morris. And Alfred Morris. That's, yeah. that's a good... I was actually pretty excited about Morris until they drafted Elliott. That's a good crew of, of running backs right there. So utilize that to your to your fullest so you could take a little bit of the pressure off of Romo. Not so to can, mention, sorry to interrupt you, you still have Dunbar. Yeah, and, Dun- and, he, and he played well. So use use those guys in your backfield just to take a little bit of pressure off of Romo. He could stay healthy a little bit longer. So use that to your advantage. But without Romo staying healthy, that, that season's going to be a disaster yet again. But I do have them going 7-9 to nine if, if Romo stays healthy. All right. Dwayne? I would say probably 5-11. and 11. Okay. Wow. All right. Craig? See, I mean, I, I think obviously Tony Romo's health depends on it, but I also look at Des Bryant being someone that I thought was going to come back from an injury last year, and he really wasn't the Des Bryant that we knew. Um, he regressed a lot, and I'm, I'm hoping that he got a lot better. Uh, the foot healed. So if that's the case, and I'm, and this is all predicated on health. So if Tony Romo is healthy, if Des Bryant's healthy, they got Zeke in there. Their offensive line stellar as it is. If they can do enough on defense, I'm giving them nine and seven. 
right. nine so and you seven. The only positive man in this mix because I just remember they were thirteen and three before the injury. Last year was an aberration. I think twelve and four. Was it twelve and four? It was twelve and four. Either, either way, a really good record. Right. Of course. Um, so I think that uh, they're gonna they're a little bit more than that than they are the three or whatever one win team that they won four last year. Four and twelve. Is yeah. this Jason Garrett's last year? It should Please, be. Please, Lord, I hope should so. Be. Okay. Oh, I'm playing to the black baby Jesus all day long. I hope he gone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Please get rid of him. He need to go. Uh, you but be- as, a, as a Philly fan, you might want him there, though, no? No, I'm tired of seeing him. I'm be- yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm just tired of looking at him. He need to get- just get to step in. Goodbye. <laughs> But I thought that was Jerry's boy. It I is thought, Jerry's but boy. But he's, he's, he's not going to say goodbye to his boy. Yeah, well, he, he said he has a kind face, the kind you like to throw shit at. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh wow. My man. Jeez, man. My We're man. getting harsh here. <laughs> wow. We'll take care of that. We'll edit that out later. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow. All right. Well, let's keep it going. Let's move on to the defending NFC East champions. They pretty much won by default, if you ask me. But anyhow, the Washington Redskins, who have done some major, major changes and have made themselves look great. I'll, I'll be the first one to say it, man. Washington's relevant again. Yeah. The pigs, the hogs, they are relevant. They do have a uh, kind of tough, well, kind of me- tough schedule, actually. Well, listen, when you win the division, your <clears throat> next season, you are going to be, it's going to be a tall order. You are going to be faced with more chances to say, okay, was this a one year, were you a one hit wonder, a one season wonder, or are you getting better? And by doing that, we're going to give you better competition. So, with that being said, whoever wants to chime in on the Redskins, please feel free because I'm, well, I'm curious. I think I think this is the team for me that will win this division. Okay. Wow. Okay. All back right. Back, eh? I mean, with all the things they've done in the off season, I mean, to to with the icing on the cake, um, the franchise tag uh, with the quarterback, and I Kirk I, Cousins. Thank you, Kirk Cousins. You're welcome. Um, what, what's this saying? You, you got like that. that. You, you like that. that. You got that. Whatever you the heck that. it is. But yeah, I mean, uh, this is a this is a, um, a division that. Wow. I mean, last last season, got, it, 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 it kind of like I've had a bad taste in my mouth with this division uh, last season because of not getting. Neither of the teams could get the job done, and Washington obviously won it by default. And I think they continue this momentum. Uh, with all the, the all the things they've done in the offseason. Dwayne, going with what you said about this division, it's anybody's division to win because it was like that last year. You could have had a you could have had a seven and nine record of win this division last you year. Could. You this could've. division's the epitome of we're just gonna beat the crap out of each yeah. other and hopefully someone is standing at the end. That's what we do. And th- and just looking at their season right now, um I see six games that they lose right off rip. Uh, I think they lose to the Carolina Panthers defending champs or uh, NFC East champs, the Arizona Cardinals or my Super Bowl pick, I think, probably this year, but we haven't gotten to it. Okay. So I think they lose to the Arizona Cardinals. Green Bay Packers, that's a loss. I see them losing to the Cincinnati Bengals. I see them losing to the Steelers' opening game. I think they split with probably Dallas and the Giants. So I see some teams that they're going to lose to right off rip. So I'm going 9-7. and seven. I'm not going to look at it into it too much deeper. I'm just going to go 9-7. and seven. I think that they have improved. I think their division is going to be stronger again this year. I think the Giants, Dallas, and Philly have all made improvements, so I think it's going to be harder to get through. Oh, thank you, Craig. <laughs> thank you, Craig. I'm going minimal with Philly, by the way. Yeah, I know you. Are. I <laughs> but know yeah, you are. I go nine. I think nine and seven is what I have uh, the Redskins at. I love their their first round pick in Josh Doxson. I loved him out of TCU. I think it's going to help their red zone as a nice red zone threat, and it's going to add a compliment receiver to a Desha- Deshaun Jackson. And then also, you know, they have one of the best tight ends in the league in um, Jordan Reed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah they do agree with that. Yeah, yeah. they do. All right, Dwayne, what do you think? Uh, I say nine and seven. You know, Giants following behind them at eight, eight and eight. You know, they win this division at nine and seven. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I don't know because very much like you, Craig, I will say opening day against Pittsburgh. Yeah, they're going to lose that game. But what I see then is the Redskins kind of bouncing themselves back, having an early like three, four game win spree, and then also a late three, four, maybe even five game win spree. So I say they'll beat Dallas, they'll beat the Giants, and then, you know, you got week four and Cleveland, RG3. RG3 facing his former team, and it's in Cleveland. You don't think RG3 is going to put everything he's got and make these people regret that they sat him? For a year, almost two years? No, because he'll be injured again. No, he won't. (laughs) 
I doubt that. Bro, he's Mr. not totally Mr. wrong. Mr. Glass. He's going to reinvent himself. That's what I'm saying about RG3. I'm I agree RG3 with you. I'm not actually on the so, RG3 bandwagon. I am. So I'm saying, I'm saying that the Redskins will lose that game. At Baltimore, eh. Um, you know what? I'll give them a win there. Philly, I'm biased. Sorry. They'll beat Detroit. They'll, I, say, I say they beat Cincy. It's an interdivision game, and it's going to be the new look Cleveland Browns. Now, against Baltimore, you know, they'll have something to show, but I think that, inter, that interstate rivalry, I think, is going to be huge. So now we're going to see RG3 versus Andy Dalton, or RG3 versus AJ McCarron, whichever happens. But if it's RG3 versus Andy Dalton, I'll go RG3 all day long. They'll lose to Minnesota, they'll lose to Green Bay. Do they split with Dallas? Yeah, I don't know. Arizona, yeah, they're going to lose. Carolina, you're right. They're going to lose. Washington at the Bears. Christmas Eve. Hmm. We don't know what the Bears are going to look like. We don't know who's the no quarterback idea. for the Bears. It's it's Jay Cutler's a terrible. quarterback. Jay Cutler's a quarterback, he but he lost Adam Gase. Right. Adam Gase. That's what I meant. Who's yeah. the head coach? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then against the Giants, final week. I think I gave that to Dwayne earlier, so I got to stick with it and say they lose. <sighs> I say Washington goes 8-8. Eight and eight. I say they're 8-8 eight eight this year because I can see them losing certain pivotal games. Were you looking at my sheet? No, I wasn't. Because I have them going 8-8. Eight eight. Oh, all right. Well, see, there we go. Eight oh, eight yeah? Eight. Did you put a little W's and L's by him? He did. He I did, did, actually. He did. I couldn't <laughs> find a pen over but here. But I, so I, was <laughs> I wasn't. I was just kind of – I was looking at it. But some of his games, we are different. I, 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 I was looking at this sheet and surprised that I – did the Browns actually get a mascot being a bulldog now, or are they still with the brown helmets? No, they actually got a because like a that's that's pretty there. cool. That is a, a you guys can't see it, right? Yeah. We're on radio, but bulldog. I'm looking at it, and if that's on their helmet, that's pretty cool. Well, I like they, it. They've been called the dog pound, so well, I know that. Well. But I, right. I just had those ugly ass orange helmets. I have them. Forever. I have them going eight and eight, but I, I I solely see this as it all depends on Kirk Cousins. Is he going to regress this year? Is he going to progress? I, I think with the franchise tag, and I think that finally he's got a coach who believes in him. And then you've got Scott McLuhan, who, as, as Frank would always say, is probably one of the best when it comes to drafting big, mean, and nasty defensive players, and that's what he's done. I think the defense, plus twice a year now we get to see Josh Norman versus Odell Beckham Jr., which is going to make for great TV. See, that's the biggest thing, too. By the way, thank you for that, Dwayne. That's the biggest thing. The acquisition <laughs> oh, of Josh Norman, which right. can move uh, Dante Hall to the corner, to the slot position. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. For I can't wait for them to play Carolina. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's going to be. Now, I actually have them beating Carolina. That's oh, going to yeah. be a great game. Have to, huh? All right, it is that time. I didn't even say it to him this week. I'm just going to introduce myself, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the one and only. The one and only. Eric Wilson. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is. Oh, I love this. It is my team. It is the Philadelphia Eagles. It is my ride or die, win, lose, or draw. I'm an Eagle fan, and I stand tall. Woo! Our schedule. All right. Listen, changes that were made. Chip Kelly, gone. Mark Sanchez, gone. Riley Cooper, gone. DeMarco Murray, gone. Uh, Kiko Alonso, gone. Byron Maxwell, gone. The list just keeps getting better and better and better because we no longer have all that stink that we had on us from last year. What I will say to you is... Acquisitions? I love the fact that we got Carson Wentz number two. Uh, we brought over another running back from uh, Oregon, you know, Byron Marshall. I like him. You know what? We're going to talk about it, even though we said we weren't going to talk about it. The whole Nelson Aguilar thing. People are saying he was set up. People are saying, you know, he's guilty. Listen, until I find out exactly what went down, and I have made several phone calls people back home trying to figure out okay what exactly happened people are asking me man hey is cinderella's a really good strip club to go i'm like yeah i was like 17 i couldn't sneak in but with that being said if in fact nelson aguilar is guilty then in my opinion yeah you got to go bro i don't have time for it i don't i you know what i just don't however if he was framed because the woman thought that she could make some change make some paper hey then you know what it will come out in the end. Eric, don't worry. If Roethlisberger can get away with it twice, he'll be in the clear. You would think, unless there's video on it. This is very true. <laughs> and nowadays, point. everything is. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the rest of my guys. I'm looking at Graham, Givens, Huff. Uh, we drafted this guy, Marcus Johnson, out of Texas. You know, I love them wide receivers in Texas. Y'all know how I feel about that. But what I will say to you is Jordan Matthews, this is his year. And that's what I'm putting it on. I'm putting my wide receiving money on Jordan Matthews this year. 
I need him to be the guy this year. Because if we don't have Nelson, it's going to be him and a bunch of young guns trying to play the game. And so, well, we got Ruben Randall. So maybe, but I think we're going to use him more as a slot as opposed to an outside wide receiver. I still have, yes, Craig, I know you're going to disagree with me. I still have, in my opinion, two of the top tight ends in the entire NFL in Ertz and Selleck. I know. You can look at me every which way you want. And every, it wasn't them. just me. Everybody in this That's room fine. just I'm looking at, Eric. at you too, buddy. You That's know. fine. But I still Two say, of the top five? Yes. Yes. Brent Selleck and Who Zach are you Ertz. putting in your top five? Is it the top five on the team? Or the top five in the league. All yeah. right, Frank. That's what, wow, <laughs> Let's really? go. Okay, who, okay, we got to stop for a second. Oh, All right. Here we go. I want to know who Eric Wilson's yes. top five tight ends in the entire National Football League are. And we're just going to start with Gronk. Go ahead and put him on there. Yep, Gronk is, I okay. said Gronk is number one. All right. I'm you do don't even right. have to just order. Just, 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 just Gronk, throw your five. Ertz and Selleck. What? <laughs> keep talk, going. Keep going. Keep, right keep going, my man. Keep going. Um, then I'm going to look at Jason Witten. Jason Witten's up there. I mean, he's <laughs> in age. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. yeah right? I mean, age, that's what I meant. With man. age comes experience. And you know what? Even without Tony Romo, he was still producing last year. And then my number five, it's really tough because I have several guys who are, like, on that plateau. So can I just run with four for right now? No, you said five. I, okay, five. So, See, now, if we were talking about New England, I'd just tell you that we have actually two of the top five tight ends in the league on our roster. So I'm going to go with <laughs> my fifth. Um, wow. Choose wisely, my I know friend. this is this is tough because, I, like I said, I have so many guys who I could put at the number five spot, but I don't know. Honestly, I, I have so many. I, I'm trying with four. Sorry, wow. I can do that. I'm going with four. Those are my four. There you go. So you got the two Philly tight ends. <laughs> yep. You have Gronk. Yep. So Antonio, and then you have Jason. Antonio Witten. Gates isn't in there at all. Or? See, Antonio because he plays for San Diego. It don't matter. So what? He doesn't get the stats. He doesn't. Are you kidding get, me? He had like three touchdowns in a single game last year. But that's one game. I think you need Washington's uh, tight end. Jordan Reed. Jordan, Jordan Reed. Okay, Reed. Put Jordan Reed Fine. in there. I'll either? put Jordan Reed. Thank you, Dwayne. I'll put Jordan Reed in there. What so about, there you go. You don't think so? What about the Cincinnati Bengals tight end? Just, just saying it, throwing it out there. No. No, he had a ridiculous year last year. One year. Okay, and the year before. One, uh, no. <laughs> nope, there you go. There's my What five. about the Kansas City Chiefs tight end? Just throwing that one yeah, out there. Yeah, Travis Kelsey's pretty good, right? I think so. He left Philly. I ain't talking, I ain't talking about Travis Kelsey. Okay, Kelsey. let's listen so to this, this, this is off Eric, of this is, this is Eric's hate list. You, you Everybody's <laughs> on it except for the two Philly tight ends, Gronk, Jordan Reed, and then Jason Witten, which you would think would be on it. This isn't spite. This is <laughs> – come on. You asked for my five, I gave you my five. But All right. moving forward – let, let me ask you gentlemen a question, since y'all won't be on me. <laughs> How many games before Carson Wentz gets his first start in the NFL? How many games? Assuming that Bradford starts? Assuming that Bradford just isn't. Assuming that Bradford starts, assuming, right? Yeah. Or yeah, assuming stays, that, stays healthy. Assuming that Bradford starts. Well, then that would mean Chase Daniels would have to come in, right? Since uh, Wentz is the third string right now. <laughs> we'll see during preseason. if that I'm just saying, that like, that's the pecking order as of now. As of now. But I'm asking you, gentlemen, how many games do you think before Carson Wentz will get his start? Depending on if Bradford stays healthy. <laughs> again. Again. But if we lose the first three, four games. See, your schedule. See, when I look at your schedule and I, and I think about some of the things that I see on NFL Network, it's going to say, is Philadelphia Eagles fool's gold? And the answer to that question, my friends, is yes. Because they're going to win against the Browns. They're going to beat the Bears. They're going to lose to the Steelers. But then they're going to beat the Lions. They're going to be three and one. And then... Your boy Eric Wilson's going to be sky high and on, and then I'm just going to look at the schedule and be like, Craig, he'll be coming in wearing the last eight games are by loss. No. He'll be wearing a Bradford no, jersey. I, I, I will, will not. I will he, not be he, wearing he a Bradford will. jersey. He already forgot that they drafted no. a quarterback nope. number two overall. He'll, nope. have, a, he'll have a full size poster. No, Sam I'll tell you right now, too. the jersey Saying fools the, gold the after jersey four games into the season. That the Philadelphia I have Eagles is a Donovan McNabb jersey. I will not own another quarterback Philadelphia Eagles jersey. Unless, unless he wins the Super Bowl, unless he wins the Super Bowl, okay. the so, next jersey so that I will you might get, as well just stop that. We, I will not. I'm getting <laughs> two more jerseys. I'm getting Carson Wentz. A no, I'm not. I said, <laughs> I said I'm getting a, a Brian so Dawkins. He just, he just admitted he's never going to win the Super Bowl. Then <laughs> no, I said unless, you said I will not get one <laughs> unless he wins us a Super Bowl. And then he said, "Are you getting Carson Wentz?" And you said, "No," because he didn't win us a Super Bowl. <laughs> if he does, then I'll get it. All right. I have two more jerseys to get. I have a Brian Dawkins jersey, which I do not have. And then I will have my personalized jersey. Those are my next two jerseys for Philadelphia. 
I mean, you can get a Wilson because there's always a Wilson on every no, no, roster. No, I'm still waiting for a damn Custom to make the Patriots or any, any NFL team. I know, and Harmon's got one any already. NFL. There's a yeah, Harmon. That's it. Russell, need to call in, bro, by the way. Anyhow, getting back to this. T- to so, answer your question. Sure, go ahead. And I'm going to put variables into this one. All right. If Bradford gets hurt. Yep. Chase Daniels does horrible. Yep. Five games, maybe? Wow. I'd say five. So five games. Five games. Before Carson Wentz gets his start, and this is of course if Bradford gets hurt and right. then Chase Daniels somehow Just forgets, up how the to, joint. forgets how to play football. Yeah. Okay, five games. All right, Dwayne. I say it goes further down because I think <laughs> Craig made a good point. You know, you guys, you guys are going to win possibly the first two, two out of three games at least, at least because it's it, again. I mean, a perfect and not the, the the perfect statement fools gold. Um, so you would think they'd win two out of three or three out of three. Uh, Bradford kind of screws up in the next couple games. Five games, and then um, I say Wentz. Um, you say what? When would Bradford get yanked out? No, no. When would? How many games would it be before Wentz gets the start? I say seven games. So seven. Yeah. Okay. I'm going second half of the season because I think okay. that they're still going to be in it. There's no need to make a change. Right. Um, then I think Daniels, like you said, will come in. He'll struggle, but they'll give him two, three games. So I'm thinking probably towards the second half of the season. I'm going maybe week ten or eleven. Okay. That uh, that All they'll right. make the switch, and so, I think that they'll make it. Evan basically, says, saying that they need five. to win five five straight. Put put playoff. asterisks against mine right. because I have variables. Of course, Dwayne now says if, if, seven, and Craig says week eleven. Okay. Now, if Bradford is healthy and they play well through the first few weeks of the season, I have them going nine and seven. I mean, this is okay. just based on the pecking order right now, yeah. though, right? Be- because it's still hard for me to believe that you're going to draft a quarterback number two overall and then sit him on the bench. It doesn't make any sense to me. I agree. You know, so um, we'll see. We'll see how preseason shakes out and everything like that. Nine and seven. I have, I have them going nine and seven. Mr. Lindo, how many games? What's the oh, record oh, for sh- Philadelphia? Uh, I have them coming in last place. Okay. Uh, I want to so, say. So, hold on. So, that means that because you have Dallas at I'm sorry, five no, and no, 11. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. That's, that's a mistake. Yes, I do. I have Dallas coming in last, Philadelphia coming in second to last with seven wins. So, seven and nine. Yeah. All right. Craig? I actually do have Philly last place. I think they go six and ten. Wow. So okay. So that means you have the Giants. You have the Giants winning the division at ten and six, and then you have nine and seven for the Redskins. Nine and seven. Nine and seven for the Cowboys. Nine and seven, and then six and ten Philly. Six and ten. Wow. I just when I look at their offense, I just don't think they have enough firepower to withstand the other NFC East teams. And right. that's also, you know, we've already talked about it. Right. Is Roma and Dez healthy? We got Zeke there. Right. What's going to happen? You, Washington's improved. But you never know. They have a new quarterback. If he plays, he plays well. You never know. It could be an Andrew Luck situation. Exactly. You You're don't right. know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of the NFL from week to week. You have a new coaching staff, too. So we're going to see what that regime has in, in, in store. All right. Here it is. My breakdown. And I will try and be as quick as possible. If I go over, just tell me to shut up, which I'm not going to do anyhow. Do you want a drum roll? No. It's okay. okay. Cleveland Browns, week one, is our home opener. RG3 has played against us. He knows us very well. So that is where I'm skeptical. However, it is our home opener. New look, new head coach coming out first. Fuel, fire, guns blazing. We're going to beat them. Then we go Sunday night to Chicago. And I only can hope that we repeat the 54-11 to 11 that we handed Chicago on Sunday night football few years back so I say two wins there Steelers here's a very interesting statistic that I need you gentlemen both all of you to understand the Philadelphia Eagles over the last I'm going to say and I will be more exact next week I I should have had this over the last at least decade have not lost on week three they haven't they may lose one two four five whatever else but they have not lost on week three so we're going into Heinz Field. It's against our state rival. I'm still going to say we're going 3-0 and and saying we are going to beat the Steelers because then we have a bye. Hmm. All right? And then begins the long, drawn-out process of the rest of the football. And this is what I don't like. I don't like early buys for us because I feel like it does not give us enough time, and if someone gets injured, then they're out. And it's very. It, we need an extra week sometimes in there. But we're not getting that, which is fine. We're going to the Lions. Here's what I will say to you. If we do not destroy the Lions like they destroyed us on Thanksgiving, oh, y'all do not want me back in this building the following Saturday. So I'm going to say 4-0. At the Redskins, that will be our first loss. Because Josh Norman, Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Jackson likes to stick it to us every single time, and he, he 
he can, he, it's like almost you can book it. Take it to the bank. He's going to hit us. Then we've got the Vikings. And as much as I love Stefan Diggs and if AP's playing in Teddy Bridgewater, oh, man, I, I don't, I need us to rebound from that game. But what I will say to you is, depending on where Minnesota is, and we'll make that prediction as we go on throughout the weeks, I say they hand us our second loss. Then we go to Jerry World for Halloween. Boy, trick or treat, you're getting your butt whooped. Then we've got the Giants. Dwayne, I'll give you that game, only because I think by this point, your team will finally have kind of gotten their legs underneath them. And with the team that you have and, and you know, you've got uh, Apple on a corner, if we don't have a true wide receiving core, it's going to be a hard day for us. And I think home field advantage would probably help. I us. agree with you. Then we go back to Atlanta. And again, that's another team who we played really close last year, week one, Monday Night Football. We owe them some get back. Atlanta is a team you don't know what you're going to get this year. You're Literally, right. they're a mystery. You're right. So I say we win that game. We're going to lose to Seattle. We're going to lose to Green Bay. At Cincy. Can we have a tie? Is a tie allowed? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Uh, Don- Donovan McNabb should, McNabbs know, that should know that one. So that, that was my joke. Thank you. Mm. Uh, at Cincy, I will say Cincinnati Bengals, December. You know, we need to, we need to really rally ourselves <laughs> for the stretch. I know Craig is putting up a big fat W. That is an L all L. day. Just go ahead and L. say it. No, I'm actually going to say we find a way to squeak one out. It's going to be a close game. Okay. Redskins, we win at the Ravens. That's going to be a loss for us, depending on Joe Flacco. Again, this is all barring health, of course. Giants, again, we're going to win. And then I have said it all year long, and I will continually say it. January 1st, 2017, we are home to the Dallas Cowboys. There will not be another embarrassment. It won't going to happen. So I believe I have us with five losses. Is that going to be Carson Wentz against Dak Prescott in that game? It may. Hey, you know what? It very well may be. But I'm saying you're, that the you're Eagles ten and five, eleven and five, eleven and five. I'm saying the Eagles finish eleven and five. That's a hail mary. I mean, I'm. I will make a bet with you right now, Eric, and we don't have to say what it is as far as the consequences of it. But I can. I will handshake agree right now that there is zero chance the Philadelphia Eagles will go eleven and five. So if you want to put, I don't even know if it's money. You know if you want to put something you where your what? mouth is. Here's what I will say. I will make that bet with you mm-hmm. on September, the show between the last game of preseason and the start of regular season. Okay. Well, we have a, in a couple of weeks, we'll get together and talk about it. Yes, we will. <laughs> we will. And we will get to that. So, all right. So there are our picks for the NFC East. Next week, we are going to do the AFC West. We're going to do the defending Super Bowl champion, Denver Broncos, along with the Oakland Raiders, San Diego Chargers, and they started off 1-4 and four, but rode themselves into the postseason and then got pushed out by the New England Patriots, Kansas City Chiefs, because of Andy Reid and his time clock management. Gentlemen, anything else before we get out of here? Oh, wait, one last thing really quick. I know y'all saw it, and I just think it's funny, so I want to talk about it. Roger Goodell apparently passed away, too. Did y'all yes, see that tweet? I, uh... Oh, yeah, I had two friends actually call me. I wasn't by my phone. I'm like... I'm talking about friends that I haven't talked to in months, right. by the way. And uh, I had two missed calls. I'm like, this is really weird right now. And then I get a text saying, like, Roger Goodell died. And I'm like, okay, what's the hoax? And then I look, and somebody tweeted it out. I'm like, what is going on right now? And then all of a sudden, then the account right. thing came up. But he got hacked. I, I got a little laugh out of it. Hilarious. I thought it was funny. And then last but not least, really quick, I know we're not really big into the Stanley Cup because the Tampa Bay Lightning didn't make it. Um you know, the Sharks are forcing a game six back in San Jose tomorrow night. Should be quite interesting. I think we all here at home level still have the Pens winning the whole thing. If I am, if memory serves me correctly, are the Pittsburgh Penguins winning this whole thing? I did. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, gentlemen, final thoughts before we get out of here. Anybody Belmont here? Stakes tonight. Belmont Stakes. Oh, that's right. About to go put my bet in at the dog track. How much? Not sure how much I'm going to bet yet. I'm just looking down the uh, You told me to listen to you last time. I should have listened I to did, you. I did because I won. I know. It's that trifecta, baby. Oh, you hit it? How much <laughs> did you win it. last yeah. time? I only put five, 3 or $5 down. I won 76 bucks. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad it's at all. It's a nice little bar too. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like Exaggerator again. He's definitely going to be in the top three. I'm, I'm trying to bait if he's going to be one or not. Um, I like him to, to do what he did, uh, follow what he did at the uh, Preakness. Okay. 
or the Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby, Preakness. Preakness. One of them. He finished one, two, and both. So um, I it like was that because one and, was uh, Nyquist. Yeah, in the Kentucky Derby. In the Kentucky Derby, you're right. So it was Preakness. Yep. And then I'm also loving what my Boston Red Sox are doing right now, up four nothing, and uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. another home run. Bogarts on base again, batting over 350. <laughs> I mean, we just continue to slug. So, 4 nothing right now. Hopefully, we can keep that going. Yeah, you know, Yankees won, f- heck, four straight, five straight. So, hey, look for us to kind of go up uh, the east there. Um, yeah, look out for the Rays. They're coming back up, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coming, coming forget back. about us, okay? <laughs> they're so far in the rear view right now, you know. No, well, hold on. <laughs> only seven no, games. They're like seven, seven games back. Seven. We're only three away from the Yankees, so it's all, we're going to be uh, we're coming back up. Uh, don't worry. Actually, you're only two back from the Yankees. All right, so I am, I'm not I'm not scared yet. And a baseball draft. Speaking of baseball, the draft's going on right oh, now. Oh, yeah, the Phillies had the number one pick in the draft. Yeah, hey, anyhow. That's pretty much consistent across the board lately, right? Uh, let's see. We had a number one, a number one, and a number two so far. Yes. <laughs> Bragging rights for something. Hey, we, we got to make it happen. But yep. we're still sitting fourth place in – our division behind the, I mean, the only team worse than us, and so one thing my wife and I can agree on is the fact that we both hate the Braves. They're sitting at 8, 18 and Speaking 22. of the Braves, I heard some uh, some news that they might be coming to the Sarasota uh, Northport area yes. for spring training. There so was, talk uh, of them building a stadium. That yeah. was talk before spring training was happening that yeah. uh, the city of Northport has already laid out stadium designs for them to come here. They do. $9 million deal that's yeah, going yeah. down right now. It I guess it's, happen, be- it's between Atlanta and West Palm, right. if I'm, uh, if I'm mis- right. not mistaken. So. And from what I understand, too, because uh, I've been kind of following the story, that uh-huh. West Palm has a little bit of a better deal going um, in terms of – I mean, the, the point is the city who can offer the most really gets yeah. the deal. That's how it well, works. Well, we'll see what happens. But, I mean, that's that's right. new and exciting to the area. Oh, Ho- yeah, hopefully we can pull that deal be because, yeah. you know, anything like that really just – Enlightens everyone around. So. I don't want no Braves down here. Let them go on the East Coast. They okay. can come play because can then the Red play. Sox are going to come down here and whoever else All get right. a little spring training games in. Fine. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm just not a fan. So well, I'm not a fan of the Braves either. But I mean, in terms of this area, it brings uh, right it, economic it impact to, will yes. go through the roof. So yes. I mean, exactly. It's good for the area. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So with that being said, for Dwayne Lindo, Mister, my ears were burning when I walked in the door. <laughs> the one and only Craig Cousin. And the great L. Bushman from the Sports Arena joining us. This is Eric, also known as E. Dubs. Apparently, Carly has my new nickname. I've had it for a while, but you I'm, should carry the moniker. Come on, now. I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing guess. it back like flats on the Cadillac. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that should go across your jersey. It is uh, actually, actually okay, both see? my Phillies jersey okay. and my Eagles jersey will say E. Dubs. We'll see, but until next week. And, Craig, we're going to miss you, bro, but have fun in Chi-Town. Let Thank me know you. how it is. I'm, yeah. I'm going the week after. I might call in. You never know. Fair enough. You know, we're, uh, you know, you'll be an hour behind us, so just remember that. I probably won't remember, but then <laughs> <laughs> if I call and it keeps ringing, then I'll know. All right. Until next week, we have taken you to a whole nother level. We'll see you next time. Chief, man, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> Transform and roll out. <laughs>